Good morning. It's Tuesday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and the Dow is up triple digits this morning. Jim, let's begin with Macy's hiring an executive from eBay. What did you think? Yeah, well, look, uh, Macy's needs more technology, and I think that that was a terrific hire. Uh, I think that Gannett walked back some of the more negatives from the conference call. I don't think they're going to be as promotional for Christmas. They got a good loyalty program. They need technology to do a good loyalty program. He said the dividend is safe. We did a piece last night on Mad Money mm. saying that this is an interesting level to buy Macy's, and I think that uh, just to do kind of wrap things up. Macy's is part of the overall rally today because remember retail has let us down. Uh, oil has let us down. Oil b bouncing a little bit here. Uh, but the industrials are coming back too. This is a broad-based rally based on frankly not that much other than the fact that we're oversold. And I think that's important. You have a catalyst like a Macy's that's, that's better after retail being bad. Uh, you have a catalyst uh, that is uh, interest rates ticking up just a tad. That gets the banks going. Uh, and in the interim, I mean, I think that if you look overseas, we're getting some strength and the dollar's weaker, which means the industrials are doing a little better. So the market's been going down, drifting down, and this is a, a kind of a big change of pace right here. The VIX has come down a lot. Uh, Fang's doing better. Uh, some positive chatter. You read Johnsa, as always, you got to start your day with Johnsa, saying some positive things about Apple. Um, I think that the comments about Facebook uh, uh, losing out to Instagram are always mm. funny because obviously Instagram is owned by Facebook. Uh, and the idea that Snap is taking share, I have not believed that and I'm sticking by that. Uh, so there's a lot of positive commentary and research, which often happens uh, after you've had so many down days. Well, what do you make of Micron and Lamb Research? Uh, that was your stock right. trading well, Micr segment. Micron is a company that sells at a ridiculously low multiple. Uh, obviously, Micron is the building block of a lot of technology. Cisco most recently said they didn't see uh, DRAM prices coming down. There has been some weakening uh, in NAND, in Flash, and that's one of the reasons why we sold Western Digital and Micron's two components are DRAMs and Flash. Uh, LAM Research makes all the equipment that you need for these, and LAM had an amazing quarter. Martin Anstis, who ever since he bought Novellus, has just been on fire. So I think that LAM and Micron are the two you have to follow, because if those two can break out, then I think what would happen is you start to say, okay, listen, hardware is good. If Adobe looks like it's breaking out and uh, Salesforce breaks out tonight on a, mm. uh, when, they, when they report, then you're going to have both cloud and hardware. And cloud and hardware, particularly data center, but also cell phone, can drive a broad-based tech rally that's not just FANG. And you have Mark Benioff on Mad Money tonight. Right now, I think that Mark, uh, look, do I think it's a big quarter? Uh, I think that there are many things going right for Salesforce, mm. um, and I think that Mark hasn't been heard from lately. Mm. Uh, let's see what he has to say, but I'm looking for some very big wins. I'm looking for some, uh, uh, by the way, I, 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 this is not to take away from Oracle, but I think that they're going to say that they're doing better than Oracle. Oracle said last time they're doing better than Salesforce. Here, I'll tell you the truth, they're both doing incredibly well. Mm. Oracle, by the way, is a very inexpensive stock here, very inexpensive. Speaking of mad money, last night you had a fantastic interview with ADP CEO Carlos Rodriguez. Lots Thank of you. tension with Bill Ackman. Yeah, what it, happens to Bill Ackman's ideas now? I, I think that you know this was one where uh, Bill had a lot of good ideas, uh, and I asked uh, Carlos. It was, it was a very tough interview because I said, "Look, he basically says you're uh, concealing things," and uh, Carlos said, "Had he sat down with me, he would have realized that I'm not." Uh, I said that, where are you in terms of margins? And Carlos was saying, listen, you know, obviously you can get better. There were a lot of good um, thoughts uh, in Ackman's presentation, of which many of them are being acted on by ADP, which is positive. I think overall it's always odd to have to question a CEO when he has doubled the performance of the S&P. I always find that you should question CEOs when they're far behind the S&P, uh, and uh, that's an important distinction. Um, but I also felt that this notion of when uh, Ackman took his vacation and leverage versus the board made me sympathetic to, to uh, Rodriguez, even as I think that there were a lot of questions about uh, in the Ackman, uh, the Ackman uh, brief should be read because there are questions about overhead. There's questions about, a, a, I'd say, a very convoluted, if not bloated, organizational chart that can be explained by Carlos, but you have to walk through it. And there are some, uh, what looks like now to be misstatements about mm. sales productivity uh, that I think would have been clarified had Ackman actually just sat down and shown the courtesy of sitting down with, with a man who deserves that courtesy because he's a major executive of a major company. And that does give you enough imprimatur that you deserve the respect of an 8% shareholder. 
And you gave a great wrap-up of this topic in your column in Real Money this Thank morning. Thank you, and that's up there right now. Realmoney.com. All right, Jim, let's also talk about Toll Brothers. They had an earnings beat revenue. It was a little light. You know, I beat, I, look, I think that this is the same. If you go back, every time it's always been earnings beat revenue a little light. My take, take is, is that, therefore, it's not. Uh, the revenues are exactly what I was thinking. Yearly is talking about how there is, that we're still, uh, there's a lot left in the housing cycle. You're going to hear peak housing, peak housing, peak housing. Peak housing occurs when we take out much higher levels. That, that, that's what happened with autos. We went to levels that were unsustainable. Can we at least go to unsustainable levels before we say peak? Jim, for over the last couple of days, we've been talking about the incredible results from Estee Lauder, but what happened with Cody? Beats the heck out of me. <laughs> I mean, the numbers were horrendous. All right, Jim, let's also move on to earnings to watch. We have a few on my list, PVH. Yeah, I, I think, look, uh, Manny uh, Trico has been amazing in recognizing that the place to do business is Europe and the second place to do business is China. He is no more hostage to the department stores. This is really important than Estee Lauder is. And that's a really, if you go back over Estee Lauder's conference call, they have a uh, mid-teens exposure to or U.S. department stores uh, of the department store uh, uh, channel. And Manny has been so smart about e-commerce. He's been so, I mean, when you speak to executives, always I, in that industry, what I always hear is like, ah, geez, that Manny really got it right. I think Manny's gonna to continue to get it right. I think back to school's been a little bit stronger for him, but Europe is gonna be great. I think he's gonna rip the cover off the European ball. All right, another earnings we're watching, HP Inc. Anything you're expecting there? I, look, I think HP's doing everything right. Now that ties in with what I said earlier about Micron. They do have a raw cost is up, but they have some very hot devices. Uh, devices, by the way, that you can't get because they're so hot. I don't think people realize there's just a huge back order for some of their hottest products. I hope they talk about that because it's really one of the few shortages that I see of anything in any aspects of my life right now. All right. Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Great analysis as always. Thank you. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.